Welcome everybody, welcome to my bathroom, the bathroom mirror. We're going to explain why, how you get the uh, southern sun, uh, southern sun around the Antarctic region, which is basically mirrored from the north. So what I've done here is I've drawn your northern hemisphere cycle of what's happening with the celestial bodies. So let's take that off. All comes out of the center vortex of creation above the Arctic, okay? And it's all projected out into our realm. So this is the cycle. I mean, the sun goes around every day in the center north vortex of creation. Just does circles, okay? But it's projected out. It's back at creation, just does this. But that's on the 2D plane. You've got to imagine the now the 3D plane underneath it. It's a vortex. This does the S curve cycle. And if you look down from above on an S curve cycle, you get the Fibonacci. That's half the cycle though, because it has to come down and then return back up. Then you'll get a full cardinoid loop, okay? But when you see half at a time, but when you see, so this half coming up on your horizon, going over and down on your horizon. We don't see the looping behind us. It's always behind us, the other side of the 24 hours. Why you see a loop is because it's basically a vortex. So if it goes around the back, it looks like it's going into the loop because it's coming into this central part. You've got to try and imagine that. I can't explain it fully to you. It's just going back into the center of the loop. It comes back up, comes back in, up and in. <coughs> okay, so this is the cycle our, our sun does, but it's just basically going around every day. So it's going around every day like this in the northern hemisphere, the center place of creation, being cast out into your sky, going over your arc of horizon, up and over. Then it's the northern hemisphere. You've also got the southern hemisphere, the dividing line of the tropics. It's now mirrored. This, this whole thing is mirrored. Well, this cycle here is mirrored to the south. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you how it's all working. So you've got this image here, right? So let's, let's take this half off again. Let's just do that half cycle there. So I'm going to draw it like this. Like that, right? Well, you come in there like that. And this is my right side. Right side and the left side. See? Right side, left side. Mirrored. But then you take it right back here and then all us humans are standing between the north and the southern hemisphere, aren't we? So I, I can now look to the north. And, uh, hello. Left is now on my right. Right is now on my left. Quite easy, it's all mirrored. So then you have to start understanding uh, the two hemispheres. Let's get rid of this one. What, what you weren't taught at school is let's say, let's just draw the big flat earth system and then we'll draw a, a tropical gap. Whoop, pen doesn't work sideways. Now it's stopped. Okay, there's your tropical gap. Tropical gap, northern hemispheres in there. Well, they don't t teach you that there's a sun and a lemma like this in the south, and you've got one like this in the north. But that's only on one meridian. One meridian. They're infinite. Infinite around the entire flat earth. 
So if you're getting, why would you get just one mirror image from there to here? When that mirrored image would be anywhere out here. They're infinite. They do a million of them. Two million, six million. They're infinite. But man only sees one within his arc of horizon. There's only one for each man. His two eyes see just one, one image because it's within his arc of horizon from east to west. Okay? So this is like a magnet. It breaks down. You could say you've got a north pole in the centre and a south pole all the way around the south there because it is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. But then as you step into the um, southern hemisphere, you can now break it down to a north and a south. It's like chopping down a magnet. You've stepped into one side of the magnet. Now it becomes two. So there's your line there, dividing line. That's, that's now the North Pole and the South Pole. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that the, the Antarctic is actually a North Pole. But if you go deep, you find that the dip compass dips at the Antarctic and the Arctic to show there are both North Poles. See, this, is, this, get, this too, gets too deep for common man. This is probably why they came up with the spinning ball idea. To, you know, make out that they know what they're doing, trust them. But no, you want to stay a slave to the system, you believe them, but you've got to go deeper than that to get yourself out of this, this prison, this matrix, opening your mind. So these are infinite, so there's north all the way around. So when the sun comes down and out, you've got to, like if you go back to your original um, sun and a lemma, you all got taught there's only one. So it goes around the northern hemisphere here, right? And then comes down to the southern hemisphere. Around and back up. So once it crosses that point there, the sun is now in the southern hemisphere. Which means that now, because you know, you've got your, your point in the north, well, we, we have that point down here in the south. So if it's come down into your south here, it's come down into our north here. That's why we get the sun all the way around the Antarctic region in the summer. And you've had it come away from your Arctic. You see that? You see how it works? So when the sun is fully down and out in the summit in your area here, be way down here. And you know the, the, the inner lemma represents the magnetic field. You know that, don't you? Well, you should do. And if you follow my videos, you don't start understanding this 3 to 2 ratio. 3 and 2 is a magnetic cycle. These are just cycles. And they're infinite. They're all, they're both sides head into the tropics where it creates the sun, the energy of our realm. So the sun is down and out, it's come right out. It follows the magnetic field of the earth. So that, this is a plan view, but if you want to look at a side elevation, it sort of looks, comes up and in, down and out, looks like a blob, a bit like that. It's all down and out out here. The magnetic field is blobbed out. You see? So it's come right out here. But the more you move in, the more you are located, say latitude-wise, the more you are north, the less, the less full 24-hour sun you're going to receive. Because you're moving back up and in. And not the best way to see it of it is like a triangle, a, a pyramid. The further, the further you are back in towards the north, the, the less daylight you will get, the more um, night time you will get. Okay? So if the sun doesn't hang out here all, every day, does it? No, it's only out there for a couple of weeks above the horizon. At 66 degrees south on the uh, Antarctic line there, um, 
It will, it will only be one day, you see it, one day at 66 degrees above the horizon for 24 hours. And as you move further back up and towards the north, you start losing that. It starts going below the horizon. But if you were, if you were further south, which is actually further north, <laughs> you would see it uh, for a couple of weeks below the horizon. I mean above the horizon, the sun above the horizon. Before it gradually started coming, because the whole sun starts moving back up, doesn't it? So it's coming back away from the centre north, heading that way, which is heading back up towards their north. You've got to understand the two sun analemmas. You've got to understand magnetism. Our whole realm is magic, magnetism. It breaks down. Just like the Mandelbrot, it breaks down. Don't think of it as just one spinning ball. It's total 100% lie and mind control. So, there's the sun and the This is what the Egyptians tell you. The sun is in many places, but only seen in one. Every man will see the sun go around him in the Antarctic region around the December solstice. This guy will see it. This guy will see it. This guy will see it. Doesn't matter where you are, anywhere around the Antarctic, it's fully illuminated because the sun is down and out in the magnetic field. The sun has come down. The sun has come down. Whether you want to see it from the northern hemisphere aspect or understand the southern hemisphere aspect. It's understanding all this. You only have to stop and think, and people are too lazy. They don't stop and think. They just want to sit there with their beer and their popcorn and watch other people do all the thinking for them. So they just go along with it because they're simple-minded. Nobody's really stopping and thinking for themselves. Hey, what's, what's happening here? You're all educated there's only one sun and a lemon, and it's, it's all in this uh, tropical gap, and it's drawn like that. But thinner in them, like that. No. No. You know, it, it's, it's a tricky thing. Understanding the flat earth is a tricky thing. Very hard to explain sometimes. But realise up in the north, there's a crossing, the sun's crossing and then a lemma coming around the north, down to the south. Well, that crossing is down here. We're mirrored. It's opposite. The two feet, the feet of the sun and the limit, they both meet. Well, there's up here, not the tropic. They both meet on the banks of the Jordan, it's described in religion. Two feet. All the energy is created at these two points when the sun comes around. So the image of the sun, you can say, is there. Because this is basically moving around every day. This is how we can see it in known physics. It's, it, we can relate to it consciously. If you put the, the sun there and the magnetic field balled up, it's right there. As the sun moves around here, that loop there and that loop there will catch it in there. The magnetic field will change here to catch the sun there. The mag magnetic field is flying all the time. As the sun comes around, the magnetic field spins around the sun, shoots up and feeds up into the Milky Way that goes over and feeds the real sun in the centre here. It's just an image that we're actually getting in the air. But that's where the energy is being created in the tropical gap between the two capacitor plates, Capricorn and Cancer, in a metaphysical point of view. Point of view, concept, understanding. Northern hemispheres, look at them all, all the way around. When the sun's down and out, it's out here in our north. That's the southern hemisphere, northern north. It breaks down. Got one up in here, north and south for you guys. We have a south and north here, mirrored. Fold it and back up in half, comes up to the centre. 
Now that I've really confused you all, realize creation right back there in the center Arctic, we cannot see, cannot get to. That, let's say it's minute, pinpoint, nothing, but it's exploded and it's between the tropics. So this area here, around here, now becomes that spot back in the center of creation. This ring here. That loses people too. You think, well, how can that center spot, the black hole, be out here? And it's hard to explain. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you've got to think of a flat plane, 2D flat plane, start at the zero point here, and then just inverted. Now we live in this realm here on top, the positive field. It's a negative field down here, but it doesn't concern us. It's below the waters. We're up here, inverted from that center point. <coughs> well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you understood something <laughs> in there. Cheers. <laughs>